All right, guys, today we're gonna be talking why you want a knife like this. So today we're looking at actually a couple of Emersons. The first one is going to be the Emerson Mini Commander, and the next one, So the first one is an Emerson Mini Commander, and the next one is going to be the Emerson uh, CQC-8 Mini, or as it's more properly designated, the Horseman. So this guy is a little bit tricky to pick up in this lighting on the camera, but this is a CQC-8 Mini or a Horseman, and this guy right here is a Mini Com or Mini Commander by Emerson. Now both of these guys are pretty old, and today I wanted to talk about Emerson because this is kind of a controversial controversial knife company as a whole because of their build pra or their builds materials and overall fitment and so I wanted to talk about why people like these knives what I think of my two Emersons and are they worth buying so like I said first off so first off we're gonna go over the minicom now the minicom is primarily one of the Emersons that I really wanted to get or at least the commander in some capacity and this is primarily due to the fact that I really like the uh, heavily recurved blade of the Commanders. I just think it looks really cool. Once again, with a lot of knife making and stuff, or a lot of like knife life essentially, it's really, in my opinion, just about collecting what you like, co collecting what you love, and uh, that's why I really wanted to go for a blade like this. So this is the Mini Commander, and uh, the first off, when it comes to Emerson's, um, why do people like these things? All right, guys. So now let's actually, let's jump into the first point, And that is, why do people like Emerson's? Now, they're, this company, similar to Strider Knives, is kind of controversial, maybe a little less or so. But the primary reason why most people that like Emerson's or collect Emerson's uh, enjoy these knives is their ruggedness slash their simplicity. If you look at this knife primarily in the handle scales here, for instance, you'll notice that you have a flathead on screw right here. You have um, Phillip, Phillips head screws here and and of course that is repeated on this side. You will see you know Phillips head screws there and just across the whole thing. And this isn't uh, a huge thing or super surprising but you know why my, why people may be asking you know, like what's the deal with that. Most times companies try to use proprietary lock systems or at minimum things like Torx bits like this. And so, you know, these are being Torx, you know, they are proprietary. You cannot take this down with just a standard, you know, Phillips head or flathead screwdriver, whereas you can with something like an Emerson. So the reason why this was kind of um, engineered is or built the way that it was is so that users could practically field strip their knives in field if they were in adverse conditions or climates. And once again, if they didn't have special specialized tools. Another thing that makes Emerson's very unique is their V-grind. So as you guys can see here, this is a pretty normal looking edge, but if I flip it over, it looks a little bit different. Now, of course, these are used knives, so this probably does have a micro bevel, but what you will see if you get real close here, hopefully I can kind of illustrate it, is that this is a V-grind. So what that means is that both sides of the blade are ground, but only this side has a bevel. So this side is kind of polished you can see a cutting edge but that is actually not a bevel if anything it might be a micro bevel but it is not an actual proper bevel so essentially what that means is this is a fancy chisel ground knife and uh so what that ultimately means is that once again in the field if you do have to rudely or crudely sharpen this knife you only have to properly sharpen one side of this edge effectively meaning that you have to do half the work that you would with a normal knife and hopefully i'll try to show you guys another knife this is a um Benchmade Mini Adamus, and this is basically more typical or more in line with what you would expect to see. So you can see there are two proper beveled edges and, of course, two proper grinds. So on that uh, Emerson, you do have both two grinds but only one bevel. And so that is part of what makes these guys unique and special. And once again, it's an overall mindset or kind of mantra to simplicity. And so these knives are trying to be very simple, very basic, and very easy 
easy to care for in the field. And that's why a lot of people that use these knives or a lot of people go after Emerson's is because they're very rugged, they're very reliable, and they're very simplistic knives. Once again, you'll see on this one too, you know, you see that Phillips head or flat head or slotted head as the pivot and then of course followed up with um, Phillips head on these guys or on the back. So very easy to field strip, very easy to maintain and take care of as a whole. So that's why people like them. Now, some of the reasons why a knife snobs do not like these knives is the overall fitment and quality of these knives. And on top of that, the materials. So first off, this uses G10 um, scales. It's also a liner lock and it does use a titanium liner, especially on these commanders, but on all of the uh, Emersons, they use titanium liners. So these are not steel. These are titanium to help with some weight reduction, arguable on that. Um, and so there's that, but there's 154 CM for the blade steel. So a lot of people, especially nowadays, like when the Emersons were first released, uh, 154 CM was a good steel. It was, you know, the kind of industry par or average, like it was what was expected at the time. Um, and nowadays, of course, things like CPM S30 V, CPM S35 VN, CPM S45 VN, uh, 20 CV, uh, crew wear, and on and on and on are kind of like the industry standards. It's less of a uh, exact steel, but for sure 154 CM is definitely seen as a lesser quality steel nowadays. And that doesn't necessarily make it a bad steel, just kind of not what a lot of people would want. And not only that, you know, these knives still command quite a high price. As I said, like if you're to buy a brand new Minicom today, um, it would be around $250, especially for the black coated version. I think it's about $250, maybe a little bit more. And it's still 154 CM. Like the brand new ones are made the same exact way these old school 2009 ones are, which in my opinion is kind of cool because, you know, they haven't really changed the system or the process at all, but for a lot of people, prospective buyers, it's kind of a turnoff or a red flag for them because they don't really want to um, buy a knife with lesser materials or lesser quality. So even though these things are pretty good, you know, they're perfectly fine and 154CM is serviceable, it is an old school steel. Now, lastly, like I said, those are some materials. It's kind of a ding. And the last one's a little bit hard to show up close and personal, but you will see if you handle any Emerson at all, there are some fitment issues. Like you'll notice, like especially up here where the G10 kind of over uh, is like overlapping the... Um, titanium liner so it's not like a perfect fitment and once again this is very minutia kind of stuff but this is stuff that people and to an extent you know when you spend 200 plus dollars 250 dollars on a knife you know you want a knife that's more like this 250 dollar knife here so you can see that like on this um spider co the fitment is very clean that there's no you know rough edges there's nothing sticking out protruding everything is very well machined and manufactured on this blade very smooth very clean whereas when you open up something like in emerson you know you kind of have to flick it shut and you know it's not like a drop shot very clean knife and so you know it's it's one of those things where a lot of people if they do spend this much money they want a certain level of quality you know and they may or may not see this as good enough for them so that's why some people dislike the emersons now as for me there has definitely been a reason why i haven't bought emersons before and the reason why i wanted to add some emersons to my collection was primarily nostalgia once again you know i started collecting knives right around 2009 to 2011 was when I really first got into it. So for me, buying these Emersons was kind of like going back to the good old days. And, you know, like these were the knives that as a kid, I was like, man, I really wish I could afford to buy that. Right. And so now that obviously I have the money to do that, I'm going back through and buying a lot of knives that are a little bit more classical for me. So I'm not necessarily buying these knives because I love the Emerson hype or because I love the chisel grind or whatnot, but I do like these knives. And once again being that these are like this is a 2009 this is a 2013 like these are vintage um or maybe not quite vintage but older school emersons you know they kind of have more of a meaning for me in that way so that's why i ended up with them now as for me i've held and handled different older emersons like these before that my friends have had and i will say i think mine are pretty good there's no lock rock in the uh lock up however some people have reported that um once again we've already been over the fitment issues 
because this isn't far from perfect. But, uh, you know, for me, I think my personal two Emersons, and these are the only examples I have to go off of, so I'm going to go off of these guys. But, you know, they're perfectly fine for me. I think that the quality is there within a reason. You know, these aren't perfect blades, but they're certainly good enough for me and in my collection. So I'm pretty happy with the knives that I've gotten. And uh, overall, I'm definitely going to be keeping them uh, because, once again, you know, Emerson's are meaningful to me. But also, too, because these are pretty pretty good examples. Definitely, like I said, I have handled a few that were lesser quality or, you know, definitely had a little bit more, like, lock rock in them and stuff like that. And that's unfortunate. But I do like mine. And in the end, too, what I do like about Emerson's is there really is, very similar to Strider, this kind of mantra and... Um, kind of air to them that is use your knives, you know, use your shit, so to speak. That's kind of the, the terminology, if you will. And so that's very much what these guys, these knives are about. And so I really do like having hard wearing kind of uh, rough and tumble knives that I can uh, use and kind of abuse as folders. So they're nice. They're fun for EDC. Um, another thing I will mention, something that we totally didn't talk about at all, of course, pretty much every Emerson is equipped with an Emerson Wave. Not all of them. And in fairness, if you buy some like newer CQC 7s and stuff, you can get ones that have the Wave bobbed. So basically there's a protrusion, but there is no hook. Anyways, the Emerson, I will say if you do buy an Emerson knife, do make sure you get one with a Wave because the Waves are really cool and they are of all the features you know the steel might not be the best the fitment might not be the best um but the wave is a really cool feature and it does work very effectively on some models more than others um, you'll probably notice here hopefully the lighting is not the best but uh you'll definitely notice on this horseman which is this guy on the side or this guy on this side and this is the minicom on this side um you'll notice that the wave on the minicom is far more protruding and so if you do really want to use a wave probably going after something like the commander is going to be a little bit better because it's going to be far easier to deploy the wave or the knife with the wave on a commander than on something like the cqc8 where it's a little bit more recessed and uh, it doesn't protrude at such a high angle so either way um, both of these do work i i open them with the wave every once in a while i don't make a super habit of it because if you're out in public and you whip a knife out with a wave feature you're gonna get a lot of attention because it does look aggressive but at the same time too if you do heaven forbid ever need a knife for self-defense the wave feature is really cool and it kind of gives you that near automatic knife uh, performance because you can literally just pull the knife out and as you pull it out of your pocket you know it deploys that knife off of your pocket material and then voila you have that blade ready to go so it's a pretty cool pretty tactical feature but once again if you're going to buy an emerson you should uh you know tactical knives are a part of that you know these are very tactical knives so definitely do that other cool things i will say on this one it does have a bullet uh case or the backing of a or i should say Gosh, what is this? Anyways, the back of a bullet, a 7.62x39, is the thumb disc on this one. That is another pretty popular trend for these knives. Um, one thing I did when I got this, this is obviously an aftermarket customization, and it kind of wiggled around. So I took some rubber, just a tiny amount of rubber, put it down in the thumb disc track, and then screwed this casing back onto it. And that gave that um, casing a lot more traction, and it doesn't like jiggle around anymore. So I would recommend that. And I would also recommend, at least on one Emerson that you got, you know, putting a casing as a thumb disc. It's not always the most practical. It does entirely work, but uh, it's just really cool, and I think it really completes a knife, in my opinion. So, anyways, those are my Emersons, what I think of them, why people like them, and yeah, that's basically the rundown on Emerson. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.